the gyroplane. Aviation's missing link and misunderstood cousin. Part aeroplane, part helicopter, the gyro was shunned to the fringes of private home-built single-seat flyers, earning the unenviable moniker of Flying Bedstead. How times have changed. Normally flying 800 feet is considered dangerous in an aircraft because if the engine quits, you've got a little time to recover. It's a real shame because just look at that view. Now in a gyro, it's safe here at 800 feet, but it isn't most aircraft at 2,000 feet. Because if the engine quits... Well, we just don't care. No need to get excited. In fact, we don't even have to keep our airspeed. You see those rotors just keep on turning, allowing us to descend gradually to the ground, gives us loads of time to look for a field to land. I think I'll choose Archie's ball. Let's go fly. Your gyro is your friend, respect her, and she'll look after you like an angel. But she also knows how to show you a good time. Now the British weather isn't kind to most sport aviators. They spend a lot of time sitting on the ground waiting for the right weather conditions. Not so in a gyrocopter. We're currently sitting in wind speeds of about 35 miles an hour. Nice thermic day and there's hardly a bump to be felt. And for observation it's fantastic as we can stay stationary when facing into wind. You see a gyrocopter can't hover, but this is a damn good impersonation. Where else can you have this much fun at this price point? Now the key distinction of a gyro is auto-rotation. The rotors provide the lift without the need of an engine to drive them. Airflow is enough. The engine provides thrust via the propeller. There is no in-flight connection to the rotors. There's no tail rotor. Because the rotors are self-propelling, there's no torque. Despite appearances, the gyro flies more like a fixed-wing aeroplane than a helicopter. She is all things to all aviators. She'll cradle you turbulence-free across the UK's patchwork quilt landscape with all the refinement of the QE2. But pinch her bum and she'll rocket you into face-pulling high G tons in a sixpence. You can throw her around like a rag doll clinging to Coney Island cyclone. 
and her loyalty will remain throughout. But the big question is... Which one do you want? The gyro that started the revolution in 2006 was the German-built MT-03 from Rotorsport. It was the Liberator, the Model T, the first factory-built gyro to be approved to fly here in the UK. It's replaced now by the faster, sleeker MT-0 Sport. It has a top speed of 120 miles an hour and a range of over four hours. It's a real touring machine. And that's the one we've just seen flying. The MTO Sport with a 100 horsepower Rotax 912 ULS engine is the entry level gyro. It's the cheapest to buy and it's very, very popular. It will do everything you expect of a gyro. Now, one of the big advantages of a gyro is the ability to fly it to fields and therefore keep it closer to home. To do that more easily, you really need one of these. Upgrade the engine to the Rotax 914 Turbo and you can fly out of significantly smaller fields. It will also keep you nimble when flying in hot temperatures, which is great when touring abroad. But, as with any technological breakthrough, first is a place to start. There'll be competitors, and some of them will be very, very good. To look at the Magni M16, there's really not a huge amount of difference. To understand her superiority, you really have to fly her. She already has the 914 Turbo as standard, and like all great machines, she surpasses her environment. the most stable gyro that you can fly in the UK. What does that mean? That means that if you take your hands and feet off the controls, it will continue to fly in the direction you were last pointing. Even if you want to turn, move the stick to the side, it will continue in that turn, even if you take your hands and feet off the controls. It's much less susceptible to turbulence. The magic carpet feel of the M16 is absolutely solid as a rock, irrespective of the wind. But the ultimate test of the M16 is you've got turbo on full power, your nose is high, your airspeed's bleeding off, it's the worst situation you can be in, and you have an engine failure. If you keep your hands and feet off the controls, the M16 will recover all by itself. If you think all this stability in the M16 means it's boring to fly, you're wrong. This baby loves to party. With her heavier rotors, steadfast trim and sure-handed stick, the M16 is a totally different flying experience. If the MTO Sport is a high-strung wag, then this is surely Jerry Hall's made in the living room, cook in the kitchen and whore in the bedroom. And yes, you might just want to marry her. So in a full power climb, should the engine fail, you could take your hands off the stick and your feet off the pedals and this machine will recover itself. No really, every gyro pilot should try one before they buy anything. This year we've had yet another gyro revolution with the introduction of factory-built, fully-enclosed gyros. Now this changes the game completely. Now we have all the benefits of their open cockpit brothers. The inability to stall, the turbulence-free ride, the short takeoff and landing, and the lack of workload should the engine fail. But in addition, we have all the comfort of enclosed cockpit flying. And 
We have a heater. With its fold-over canopy and tandem seating, the German-built Rotorsport Calidus picks up where those of us left our dreams of being fast jet pilots. Whilst the Germans have continued the trend for tandem seating, the Italians have gone for a side-by-side -side arrangement with this, the Magni M24 Orion. For the passenger, it's up front and personal. The M24 is a truly amazing aircraft. Sitting here in the cruise, you really couldn't tell if you were in a gyro or a light helicopter. The visibility is great, the views are just fantastic. But there are three distinct advantages over this machine and the R22 helicopter. The first is because this seat, the pilot's seat, is slightly further forward than the passenger seat. We've got a lot more elbow room as we're not sitting shoulder to shoulder. Secondly, unlike the R22, this machine is trim stable. It has all the stability of its brother, the Magni M16. But the biggest difference, if you have an engine failure in an R22, you have exactly 1.2 seconds to react. Otherwise, your rotors will slow down. In the M24, we just don't care. To make things simpler, we've created a comparison chart as a document. Log on to our website, register an account, and you can download it for free. When you're ready to see the goods, come and see us at York. It's the only gyro showroom in the UK. You can fly one to try one before you buy one. For those of you who want to experience a flight in a gyro, the Gyrocopter Experience has flying schools throughout the UK. See our website for details. I'm Phil Harwood. Let's go fly.